Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Griffin and I'm a filmmaker based out of Orange County, California. And today we're actually just wrapping up a shoot right now, but I'm going to take you back in time to yesterday and I'm going to kind of walk you through some of the roles on set. And I just want to show you on, I think there's maybe 15 people on this crew today. I thought it'd be a good opportunity to kind of show everyone what everybody does on set. What does a gaffer do? What does a key grip do? What does a DP do? And just show you how everybody works together to make commercials. So let's go ahead and get into it. Introducing Fight Camp. Thousands of workouts led by expert trainers that meet you on your time. Live punch stats motivate you to push harder and help you map out your progress. Knockout achievements or go head to head against other rivals from across the country or across the living room. Learn the basics and sharpen your skills over time through tailored paths. Join the biggest boxing community in the world without leaving your home. Fight Camp. All right, guys, so I'm here with Dave. You guys know Dave already. Dave's directing today, and he's going to talk a little bit about what directors do on set. Basically, the director is uh, the guy that just casts the vision. So um, we spend a lot of time in pre-pro, kind of doing all scripting and storyboarding, yeah. and you work really closely with DPs and art design and the actors and everything like that. They're basically the decision maker when it comes to everything creative. Um, obviously, you kind of lean on your DP um, to be creative in the lighting space, and then you lean on your art department to be creative in their space, and you let them be professional and do their roles. But at the end of the day, the buck stops with the director. So um, that's basically what we do uh, on set. Sweet. There you have it. Thanks, Dave. Mm -hmm. So I'm here with Ben Hess. He's our DP for today. Ben's a talented guy, so we hired him in. A lot of the times on the commercials, I'm DPing, but for this one, I want to step aside and be the executive producer and just kind of focus on that role. So we hired in Ben. Ben's the man. So Ben, why don't you tell us a little bit about what DPs do? So a DP is going to help craft the lighting and the mood of the shoot. Uh, they're going to talk to the gaffer and the grip to figure out what lighting, what gear is going to be needed to craft whatever look you're going for. You know, in this instance, we're 14 stories up, so we can't place lights outside of the window. So we're having to figure out how to adjust the light from inside. So just thinking creatively, uh, you know, like put together the camera with the first AC so that it runs smoothly for this shoot because we have to go from gimbal to handheld or tripod in a matter of minutes because we can't really waste time. So thinking about the camera setup, what lenses to use. And a lot of it is just good communication between the director, uh, the director and the producer, and just everyone on set to make sure it accomplishes the goal of the shoot and the look that we're going for. So. Yeah. <laughs> Tell them what camera and lenses we're on today, Ben. So we're on the D red DSMC2 Monstro. I like the big sensor look, uh, but you can achieve a big sensor look with other cameras out there. So don't get too intimidated, you know, by thinking you need to have this because it's all about how you light it and everything else. But Back to the camera, we've got the Tokina Vistas, very sharp lenses, even when you're wide open, because we want to get some good depth of field, but still have a nice crisp and sharp image. We're rocking this Ignite accessories, and that's allowing me to go from gimbal back to tripod or handheld very quickly. And for the whole shoot, I'm actually using this easy rig. This is gonna take all the pressure off my hands, put it on your hips and your back. So. You just got to think about your health too, so. <laughs> well, Ben, thanks, man. Dude, thanks for bringing me on. Yeah, yeah, man. Thanks, dude. All right, guys, so I'm here with Jacob. He's our first AC on set today. So, Jacob, you want to talk a little bit about what first ACs do? Yeah, first ACs, there's a lot of different stuff we do, but in the ACs, uh, we always make sure batteries are charged. We always make sure monitors are up and running, connecting the Teradex, and so they're talking with each other across all these different receivers, um, and we also full focus. So. During the shot, we will adjust the focus plane, and so everything's sharp. That's it. So having a first AC, like if you have a camera with like autofocus, obviously it's a little bit different. Like someone's not pulling focus for you, but a lot of times when you're on commercial sets, you're using cinema lenses, and so cinema lenses are manual. There's no autofocus involved, and like today we're shooting on a Red Monstro, so there's no autofocus in that camera. And there's no autofocus on the lenses, even if you had an autofocus camera. So that's why having a really talented first AC, especially when you're shooting something like boxing, for example, and maybe you're on a gimbal, there's movement involved. 
it's really important that you hit focus the first time too because it can cost people money but if you have to do a second take a third take a fourth take because you couldn't hit focus the first time basically you're burning time with the actors you're burning time on location and it extends the day out where you might have to go into like overtime too. So from a production standpoint, like when you're managing your budget, it's important that you have a good first AC light checkup. Um, or some of the other guys I've like worked with, like Ryan, for example, I really like as well. But that's kind of what a first AC does. So I'm here with Justin. Justin's our gaffer today. And he's gonna talk a little bit about what gaffers do on set. Uh, gaffers are the the eye of the uh, DP. The DP's looking for a look, work with the director, and my job is to facilitate it with my grip. My grip is moving all the fixtures around and I'm the one setting up the lights and ratios. And that's what we're doing. Cool. Yeah, so basically, you can think of like the gaffer and the DP, they're gonna work super closely together the whole time. So uh, anytime I'm DPing, it's really important that relationship you have with the gaffer so you guys can help each other achieve the look you want from a lighting perspective. So, sweet. Thanks, dude. All right, so a key grip. A key grip is the person that works a lot with the gaffer, and the key grip is basically the person who's in charge of placing the lights. So if you're on a really simple set, it might seem real easy, like, dude, put the light on a light stand, right? But uh, oftentimes on bigger sets, you might be, say, bringing a light to a ceiling. And so the, the key grip would be the person who's responsible for making sure that's done in a safe way, and then also can uh, be done in a way that would get the light where it's supposed to be like make, making sure that the light's hitting your subject the right way, hitting the background the right way, all that stuff. And the key grip, basically they're someone who needs to be really competent with rigging stuff. And, and the biggest thing for the key grip is just understanding safety and understanding how things work. Uh, one, because like lights and equipment is super expensive, but two, just m making sure that nobody would get hurt. Okay, so one of the most critical roles on set is the art department. And oftentimes there's art directors who are basically the person who's in charge and then they might have an art assistant. So in our case, that's what we had. And basically that job is gonna be, you see all this beautiful stuff here? Well, sometimes you come to a place and you're like, okay, it's more of like a warehouse looking place, but I need to dress it to look like an apartment. Or maybe you're in an apartment and you wanna dress it like we did today and you wanna make it look like a gym. Feel free to pan down and see the weights. So. Earlier today on one of the spots, I don't know if I can show the footage yet or not, but if I can, I'll show it. But we basically dressed this apartment to look like a home gym. And that was something that our art department was in charge of. So oftentimes they'll go buy props from either a prop store, rental houses. Sometimes they just go to like Target or other places and they'll buy stuff. And sometimes you can even return the stuff too. So they might be in charge of returns as well. So they would have a certain budget and then they would typically stay within that. And they would usually work with the director to understand like what is supposed to be shown and what's the feeling supposed to be, what's the color palette gonna be, uh, is it supposed to feel minimal, is it supposed to feel, like we shot this other commercial, and it's supposed to feel sort of a uh, rundown, you could say. So that's basically what the art department's in charge of on set. All right guys, so I'm here with my buddy Jeff. You guys have seen some other videos before. Jeff's doing our DIT today. You wanna to talk a little bit about what DIT's doing on set? Yeah, so DIT, um, it sounds simple, but I think having specialized people, making sure they have specific areas of responsibility is super important. So basically, everything that comes off the camera card, I take it directly, and it goes directly onto two backup drives that we have on set. And obviously, that's just for redundancy, and making sure that if one drive blows up, or we lose one, or something, we have identical copies of the footage. Um, so on set, it's really just making sure that we have both of those backed up, constantly checking throughout the day. Uh, and then also, uh, on a lot of bigger sets, DITs will also build looks throughout the day too, so that way, once we start taking it to post, we kind of already have a rough look to know stylistically and narratively where we headed with that direction. Uh, so just kind of making sure that, yeah, it's a file wrangler, making sure all the data is managed, uh, organized, and yeah, taken care of. Dope. Yeah, yeah that's it. So, um, you know, DIT is one of those positions that doesn't really exist on a lot of smaller sets. And the reason that we have a DIT on this particular set is because I, I was doing DIT for the last one and it just, it's so funny. It's like, dude, how hard is it to freaking import a car and just throw it on a drive? It's like, well, if you also have to be the guy driving the van and like loading all your C stands and loading the lights and like, like re returning rentals, it's like, it just becomes an extra job. And then what happens, like I'm not the editor for any of this stuff. We have a different editor that's actually not even here today. So getting one of these drives to our editor is like a whole thing too. So it's like making sure that like there's already identical copies, someone's gone through, and we, are, we always talk about it, but we, we use a program called Hedge, 
So Hedge, it does what's called a checksum verification. So it'll make sure if there's any corruption, it happens when coming from the card to the drives, it'll notify you too, it'll tell you like, hey, like there was a problem, try that transfer again. It's different than just using like Finder or something to drag the files over. So anyways, it's really nice knowing having the DIT, they're gonna really make sure that like all the stuff is exactly where it needs to be. So when you hand off that drive to your editor, everything's already in there and yeah. it's organized. I think one last thing is, uh, especially on these things where we're shooting for three days in a row, it's so easy to mess one thing up right. and then all your footage, all your file structures get messed up for the day, for the week. We're shooting three days, we're probably shooting close to eight terabytes for the full project. So yep. I think making sure that we're on top of that, and again, having someone super dialed on that process so that it doesn't become a headache for everyone else after me, it's most important. All right, thanks dude. So the executive producer, that's generally someone that works with the client and just facil facilitates that relationship. That's the biggest thing. And on other sets, that's oftentimes the person that wins the job. So I happen to be in house with Fight Camp already, so it's not like I'm like winning that business, like signing the contract and like earning that business. But oftentimes on um, other sets, the, if the executive producer would be someone who is basically securing, agreeing to the, the budget and agreeing to like the overall vision of like, okay, what is the thing we're actually shooting? And oftentimes they're the ones that they're, they're gonna have a, a director in mind. So they say, okay, this director's gonna be perfect for this spot. He or she is really artistic and they've got an eye for boxing or whatever the thing is you're shooting. So uh, that's typically what the role of the executive producer would be. This is Rob, he's our PA, he's also our BTS shooter, tell us what you do. Uh, anything Griffin tells me to do, no restraints. Alright guys, so that's it, wrapping up, hopefully you enjoyed this video today, you got something valuable out of it. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them below, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.